It is Wednesday, my dudes, and it's a kind of eh episode. Actually, no, I'm not going to say that. It's an amazing episode. We're going to do a few things. <laughs> First of all, we're going to be lighting up the park, and we're also going to have a little a little bonus roller coaster at the end. So we've got that, that to look forward to. The roller coaster does have sort of a catch, though. I'll explain that as and when we get there, or when I basically run out of things to talk about when it comes to talking about lights, which... I don't have a great repertoire of things to say about light sight. I have some rather controversial opinions. I, I for one, am very like, I, I, I don't know. I was trying to think of a controversial opinion that one might have for lights, but honestly, I don't know. I guess one thing I could talk about is, or well, mention, I suppose. I covered it briefly last week when we were lighting up the area around Mad Mouse. I like these gothic style path lights that have now gone because the footage was moving too fast, but I really like the appearance of the, go oh, are we doing another one? No, we're lighting up a wooden coaster now. The wooden coaster, I should say, not a wooden coaster. I really like those gothic path lights, even though they are technically classed as... I don't know if they're part of the spooky pack, but the game classifies them as spooky scenery. So whenever you place them, you get a little wolf howling sound effect, and it's all going to be really scary. But I think they work really nicely as just generic street lamps. Like, you've got the normal Victorian style street lamp, but it's sometimes nice to have a bit of variety. And there aren't really any other generic looking street lights that aren't just clearly lamp posts that go on the side of a road. So I do like... I do like those gothic star ones, you know, the game seems to... I feel like it's judging me, you know? Like, the game is fine, having those lampposts there, but I feel like the game is judging me a little bit. I, I feel like it's very passive-aggressive. So, Frontier, please, please change this. <laughs> yeah, It's just like, oh, yes, you've placed a spooky lamppost, haven't you? And I'm like, yes, I have, game. What are you... Are you going to call the police on me? Mm -mm, I don't think so. Mm. Anyway, there. So now we've so we've done a few paths. I've basically made sure that every pathway in this park is completely lit up now. And then I thought we could just go back and light up some of the roller coasters. Well, all of the roller coasters that aren't already lit up, just because you go to a real theme park, right? And you can see all the rides quite nicely at night. It's quite a nice. There was a lot of ice, just eyes, just that whatever. Probably didn't come across that way to you. Um, yeah, you go to like a real theme park and all the rides are lit up at night and it's all quite a nice spectacle, whereas Neptune Park is pretty much just dead at night. The big challenge of this video was lighting up, and I mentioned this last week, was lighting up the big blue tower. If you go to somewhere like Blackpool or, Eif or Eiffel or to Paris and look at the Eiffel Tower, you can see the tower is all lit up along that shaft. No, uh, no, no, no mature comments, please. <laughs> So I thought I should do the same and you know like having the little lights means we can do light shows in the future as well or like you know during Pride Week we can have the LGBT colours down the tower or something like that just for various different things. There's there's many things we could do with lights and it'd be nice just to have the tower lit up like a real tower like at the moment it's just a pitch black object with a spotlight at the top so it looks a little bit naff. Here I am just experimenting with different ways of lighting up the tower and it, I've quickly realised it was going to be tough. So I basically copied a section of the tower and placed some lights around it and then what I was going to do was separate those lights from the building and then go, well, shift them over and place them around the actual tower itself. It's important if you do a project like this, because I didn't think of this the first time I did it so I had to quickly, they, the footage just cross faded just then because I realised I had to redo the entire thing from scratch. What I did was that I didn't separate the uh, the lights from the tower, as in I didn't make it a separate building, which is what I've done here. The good thing about having it a separate building is that you can easily select all of the lights really quickly because you just select the building that they're part of, which is only comprised of lights, and then just quick select every single part and you can easily change the colours all at once, whereas if it was on the tower, if you do a quick select of all the objects, you select the entire tower, which represents a large variety of objects that you can't just recolor as one big group. So it's a good idea. If you ever do something like this, this is a good, a little top tip, which this series is not filled with many. I'll give you that. But you know, what do you think? I think that came out quite nicely. We still got the little legs. Yeah, the little legs to do. So we can just do that. I do have to speed the footage up quite a bit here, actually, because it I, it took me a while because of Planet Coaster's awkward move tools. Like, it, I, th I think it works where you're controlling the center of um, an area of pieces rather than... I don't really know how... It, it, it seems weird, though. Anyone that's played Planet Coaster's advanced move tool knows exactly what I'm talking about, where you press Control x or just advanced move, and then the actual arrows that appear don't really seem to make any logical sense. It's really hard to place objects accurately. So that was a fun challenge to overcome. So I basically what I did was I lit up one side, and then the intention was to just select all the lights and then duplicate them around and place them on the other sides. And so... And so I did. That's what I did. So now, now you know how it was done. So, 
We've talked about the lights of the tower. We've talked about the what I've learned. There's not much more for me to really discuss now. I'm pretty sure I sped the footage up way faster. Now I'm about to speed. It's about to get a little bit faster in a second. So, as I mentioned at the very beginning, there's going to be a bonus coaster, but with somewhat of a caveat. And I said that I could elaborate on what this catch was when um, when uh, when I ran out of things to talk about with lights and ran out of things to talk about mid sentence. Apparently, just then as well. Uh, and that is that it's it is not to stay this roller coaster. It, I re it was it was the it's the closest. With this park, as I mentioned in a previous episode, I tend to build a lot of roller coasters and spend a long some of them, some of them I spend hours on, and I ride it. I'm like, eh, I'll just delete it. This ride, I was like that. I was like, eh, I'll just delete it. But it's basically the closest I've ever come to just leaving a ride in the park. Like so close, it could almost be considered like canon. And then we just demolished it because there was some safety feature with the steel and it was easy just to tear it down or something. But it was totally going to it was totally going to opened with the park. So th this is like a ride that very nearly opened. and It's a giga coaster. Specifically, it's not a recreation because it's because it's there's no resemblance to it. But it's very heavily inspired by the roller coaster Intimidator 305, which is uh, well, about, OK, I thought I was about to show you here, but it's in this area where this station is. This part of the park has been like the most awkward spot to fill because it's a bit of an awkward space anyway, because we're on this slope and the path is a bit ugly. I, I, I do go back and eventually remodel this whole path because it looks it looks dumb, basically all wiggly like that on the surface. But for the time being, I was like, I just don't really know what to do this area because it's an awkward shape and you can't really place a flat ride here because the ground isn't flat. And I don't know, I, I, I'm sure better players than me could easily fill this space with in a really cool way. I mean, if I, I mean, I guess I could have done it eventually because with the Mad Mouse coaster, I think that area is probably one of my favorite areas in the park. And that was in a similarly difficult spot where I wasn't really sure how to fill it. So regardless, it is filled now. I did remodel the path and I put a coaster there. My uh, super unrealistic coaster that was meant to be a good, be a farewell to the park that I think has been pretty fairly realistic thus far. Just do, let's just do a stupid ride at the, at the very end. So that's kind of the stupid ride. Maybe I'll try and squeeze in a couple more episodes after that of just various bits of things that need doing, but I think it's going to be the last coaster. So you've still got I'm trying to think how many coasters are yet to be built. There's two coasters that have yet to be built and a go-kart track as well. And there's a few other bits that are built, like various buildings, bridges, that sort of thing. So you've got a few more episodes left in Neptune Park. I don't know if we're going to get to 30 episodes, though. Where are we now? 26? We're probably going to get to 30 episodes, actually. But, I mean, there's not going to be much more after 30. Maybe episode 30 itself would be the PO... Not the POV, the general park overview episode. Who knows? But uh, we're definitely getting close. So, yeah, just going back to uh, finishing off various bits of lighting around the park. I feel like I've talked a lot about the roller coaster and we were actually... Well, it turns out we were actually nowhere near uh, getting to it. Luckily, the build won't take that long because I didn't finish the coaster. Like, I didn't do any of the, the supports. Like, the coaster has no supports and it's not completely fully smooth. It's, I started smoothing it out and, like, you know, f neatening up the rough edges here and there. And then I thought, you know what? I just don't think the effort is worth it with this ride. It's just a little bit... It's not great. I'm looking at the Vegas timeline and we're about to get to the time lapse. So that was pretty much the bulk of this episode. If you enjoyed it, you can close it now. Because, um, I mean, the ad has probably played, probably played at this point. So you can close it if you want. But here we are on the coaster that eventually gets knocked down. But yeah, I thought you guys might want to see it. Because I mentioned in a previous episode where I did show some like failed designs, but I didn't actually show any building. People actually said, oh, it's quite interesting actually to see some of the other rides. And people seem to like the construction of roller coasters, even if they are not here to stay. So this is it here. So you can see it's um, the how it was inspired by Intimidator 305, if you're familiar with that ride. First of all, it's the same sort of track design and, you know, same sort of initial layout. So we've got a really tall drop that goes into a big corner. So really, really high Gs. Really, I've I've been told Intimidator 305 is a very somewhat of a unique ride experience in that that you go around you go down a massive drop, but instead of going up a big hill, you just go down this big banked corner, very high speed, so you get a lot of g-force. And from then on, Intimidator 305 doesn't really get that high off the ground. There's the second hill after the initial drop, which is just like the one we just bopped over just then on the POV, which kind of gets a little bit of height. But after that, the ride doesn't really gain much altitude. It just kind of weaves its way around along the ground, going through various big helixes and banked turns. So it's, it's a fast ride, lots of Gs, that sort of thing. So I wanted to replicate that kind of style here. And I think 
if it was in a better area of the park or a different area of the park, like one, a bigger open space, I probably would have kept it or, you know, refined it somewhat. Uh, like towards the end, I got a bit lazy and just did any old layout just to see what the ratings would look like with the intention of going back and actually perfecting the end later on. But in the end, I was like, you know what? It just looks a bit weird perched on this hill like this. I feel like if this ride were, exist, were to exist in real life, it wouldn't be built in a location like this. It would be built somewhere a bit more flat and even and very clearly leveled out for a roller coaster, whereas this is just a random hill with this roller coaster's awkwardly like plopped on top of it. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 you can see me doing the smoothing, some, some smoothing here, starting it out, but I didn't end up finishing it. But here's the POV. I won't talk over the POV because I think people prefer it when I don't. But I mean, this is the lift hill and there is no sound for the lift hill part. So we can talk over this. We can just fast forward some of this, though. So um, I'll probably come back at the very end just to say a few words before we before I leave you. Um, but I hope you enjoy the POV of this ride that never, never stayed. <laughs> Here we are coming into the end of the ride now. So that was it. So I mean, it was. I think it has potential. If I'd spent a bit more time of it, it could have got a lot better. But just something about the general appearance of the layout and stuff, and the fact that the rating for intensity was a bit high for my liking, even though I think the one that replaced this was even higher in the end. But you know, I thought uh, maybe, maybe for another park, maybe for another time in another life but not this one. So that was kind of the lost coaster of this park, really. Like I say, this is probably the closest, like this is the, out of all the failed designs that I never used, this was probably the closest to staying. So it has, it has that going for it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, my dudes. There are some things on screen and I will see you in the next one.